Hello all my lost girlfriends, my name is Forge and welcome back to a brand new video where today we're going to be talking about random tick speed within Minecraft. So the random tick speed, it is the brand new game rule that was recently introduced within the 1.8.0.8 beta. So we're going to be talking about what this brand new game rule does to your Minecraft world and what you can do with it. So if you enjoyed this video, then please let me know by leaving a like on it and subscribe for more videos by me in the future and let's get started. So right now, I have my random tick speed all the way to 1000. And if you do want to go ahead and change it, you can go ahead and go over to your settings and go to your game settings and scroll all the way down till you find random tick speed. And the best part is you don't even need to have cheats on. You can activate it with cheats off, which is pretty cool. And you can still get achievements and all that awesome stuff. So this will make things a lot more interesting throughout your Minecraft world. Now the default one is going to be at a 1, but if you decide to keep it at 1000, then everything in your world is going to be a lot different. So if you end up punching an animal, which is what we're going to do right now, if you end up punching like a cow or a chicken or a pig, then it's just going to go ahead and bounce up pretty slowly. And it looks like it's not even running, but it actually is running. So that's the running speed for the pig whenever you do end up eating it, stuff like that. And then if you go ahead and come over to this mob right over here, which is known as the shulker, we all know the shulker. The shulker, very, very mean for shooting us with those things. But if I go and switch to survival mode, it will go and open up and it will stay open up for a little bit of time. But then that little thing that pops out, it will end up just going really slow. I mean, it looks like it's just trying to chase you, but it can't chase you at the same time. So, it, I mean, you can just go and run away from it. You can do whatever you want and stuff like that. And the funny part is that if you do have yourself a creeper around here, then the creeper will actually become really, really fat and he won't actually explode you. I forgot to switch back to creative mode down here. So, there we go. So, I'm actually going to go ahead and grab myself a creeper right now. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that because the creepers, it is pretty funny just to see them explode and stuff like that. I'm also going to go ahead and grab myself a flint still because that's going to be for something that we're going to go ahead and look at here in a moment. And so anyway, here is the creeper right here. And if I go ahead and ignite it with the flint still, watch this. It's going to go ahead and become really fat. And then you can look at it for a few seconds and then it's just going to go ahead and explode. And now if you are having it chase you, then the funny part is that it'll, it will become all big and puffy. And then you can back up, it'll go back to normal. It will then it'll become puffy again if you get close to it. And you can just do that over and over just to tease the creeper. And it'll make a really great little troll as well for your friends and stuff like that. But anyway, we do have ourselves our friends still. And if I go ahead and come all the way over to this forest, watch what happens once I go ahead and ignite this tree. And it's actually going to start to burn, of course, sometimes. It's just going to go and burn that single block. But if you go and sit here for a little bit, look at that. Just destroy like half that tree already. But it's supposed to like end up destroying the trees a lot faster than normal with the fire. I and mean, look at that. Look how fast it's burning down this forest. It's like burning it down pretty fast and stuff like that. Which is actually just really, really cool. So you can go and play around with this inside of a jungle. Which I'm actually going to go ahead and come all the way to this jungle. And I'm actually going to go and show you guys what happens if you do go ahead and ignite this thing. Because a jungle, it is all full of vegetation, stuff like that. And a lot of people, they like to burn it down. I mean, why not? But we do have ourselves some fire over here. And you guys can already tell that this fire is already burning down this jungle right here. And it's actually quite laggy as well because of all the fire that's around here. But you guys get the point. It just pretty much burns down stuff pretty fast. Now, what now the best part is, if I were to go ahead and come over to this tree and I go ahead and destroy it, watch what happens once I go ahead and get rid of all the wood. It's actually just going to go ahead and start to get rid of all the leaves pretty fast. I mean, this would be very useful for survival players and even for maps and stuff like that. And even Skyblock, because once you actually destroy it in Skyblock, you can get yourself a bunch of different saplings, which is just really, really cool. I mean, we got ourselves with five saplings just from destroying that one tree. And we even got ourselves about two more as well. But, I mean, it's just really, really cool that you can now see the tree just destroying the leaves pretty fast, stuff like that. But the next thing that we're going to go and look at is going to be the bow. Because look at the bow. Whenever I go and shoot the arrow, the arrow just goes really, really slow. So you can just go ahead and watch the arrow just go flying through the air. Which normally, you would actually just see the arrow for just a few seconds. Then it will just go ahead and go away. But then for the trident, you can go and watch the trident go really, really slow as well. Which is just really, really cool. And now it's right inside my building. Right there, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and ignite that. And we're going to go and come back to that later on. But the next thing that we're going to go and move on to is going to be plant growth. Because whenever it comes to plant growth in Minecraft, Minecraft players, they really want a lot of different wheat. They want to have themselves a lot of pumpkins. And they also just want to have a lot of melons as well. Now, good news. If you actually want to go and grow yourself some pumpkins with the stem and stuff like that, 
Watch what happens. Once the stem is fully grown, the pumpkins, it's actually just going to start to grow instantly. I mean, well, almost instantly anyway. But you will start to get yourself a lot more pumpkins and melons than you would otherwise. I mean, you can just sit here for hours and just start waiting for the pumpkin to grow. Or you can just sit here for seconds and get yourself a bunch of pumpkins for your iron golems or your pumpkin pies pretty fast. I mean, it's just really, really cool the way that this actually just grows them. So like that. But not only that, but it also affects how fast a sapling grows. So watch the sapling grow into a tree. It won't take that long. But there we go. Oh, wow. Wow. Just a tree stump. <laughs> we just got ourselves one tree stump. Well, that was anticlimactic there. You know, I, I thought it would grow into a tree. But no, we didn't get ourselves a tree. That one grew into a tree. But we got ourselves one stump. Just one block of wood. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like you to see the world's smallest tree. The tree stump. Okay, anyway, I mean, it's, I mean, it doesn't even give you leaves. So why do we need that? I don't really know. But anyway, the other stuff that also affects is going to be how fast wheat grows. So you've heard of people watching grass grow, right? But this is ridiculous. I mean, you can just watch the wheat grow all that you want. So if you had yourself like a super flat world and you had made it on a console edition or you transferred it over to the bedrock, then you can just go ahead and watch all of the wheat grow just really, really fast without that world. And I mean, it's just going to be really, really cool. Whenever you just go ahead and watch that. But, and for another thing that we're going to go and look at. It's going to be how fast we take damage from a zombie. So if I were to go ahead and spawn in a zombie. Normally we will take ourselves a lot of damage. If we are going up against a bunch of zombies. But if I were to go ahead and come down to this cave. I'm going to go ahead and place down a bunch of zombies real quick. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys this very quickly. And also if a villager is running away from a zombie. Just like I showed you guys with the cow and the pig. He will actually go ahead and go. Um, pretty slow whenever he's trying to get away from the zombies, but the zombies they're also going to go and run um, after him very slow as well But take a look at this. You see it looks like they're actually ugly us. We're not taking a lot of damage But they are still making us cause damage something like that now if you were to go ahead and take damage from a cactus Then the cactus actually won't end up causing you that much damage as well Of course as you can see normally we'll just stay here and We'll keep on taking damage over and over and over again, but that actually won't be the case and I'm very curious to see what happens if we do end up getting hit by a shulker shell. So what happens if the shulker does hit us? Um, is something going to happen? Okay, it looks like we actually just levitate as slow as we did before. I'm actually going to go ahead and switch back to creative mode before we do end up dying here. And there we go. So that thing is still going to go and come after me. Okay, it's not going to come after me or maybe it is. I mean, I can't really tell. But you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and come all the way over here. Now, one of, for another thing I want to go and bring up is using a furnace with random tick speed. So if you're wanting to smelt on ores... Do not use random tick speed, okay? The random tick speed, it affects pretty much how slow or fast the Minecraft furnace can end up smelting down ores, cooking up food, and stuff like that. So if I were to go and place this right here, and I go ahead and place down my iron ore, and I go and place down my coal, watch how fast this goes. Yeah, it goes pretty slow, and it doesn't matter where you are in your world, once the random tick speed is set, it affects your Minecraft world globally. So you won't be able to end up getting rid of the slowness of the furnace. So make sure that if you want to end up using random tick speed, do not use it at 1000 with a furnace. So if you're like, hey guys, down below in the comments, please let me know what you think of the random tick speed. Do you think that the random tick speed is going to be very useful? For me, I think it's going to be very fun to see within different types of Minecraft maps. So maybe somebody can make like a time map and utilize it somehow. I mean, it's just really, really cool. And of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, then also let me know by leaving a like on it and subscribe for more videos by me in the future. And for now, I hope that you have a logical day and I will catch you next time. Bye.